Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melanie and I make videos about living in Copenhagen. Today we've headed out of the city to one of our favourite museums, the Freelance Museum. It's a huge open air museum just outside the city. The nearby station is Sorgenfri and you can get here on the S train. And we love coming here. We come all different times of the year. The autumn is a particularly nice time to come. But today it's the summer and uh, I just thought I'd show you a little bit about the museum, what you can see here and uh, the lovely day that we're going to have. I'm recording this in July 2020 when Denmark is on its way out of the first wave of uh, the coronavirus. Uh, lockdown's finished here quite some time ago, sort of April, May time. But the museums were very, and cultural sector was very hard hit by COVID. Uh, they had to close. Some of them used the opportunity to renovate and do different things, but of course they weren't getting the normal revenue of people coming in and visiting them. And to help stimulate that cultural um, sort of community here in Denmark, the government are supporting the museums by allowing them to offer 50% off their tickets for people coming in and the government are making up that shortfall and this is to encourage tourists that are able to come to Denmark and also uh, Danish people to come back into the museums, uh, theme parks, zoos, aquarium, all of that kind of stuff. So they're all offering 50% off until August the 9th which is the end of the school holidays here. So that's a really great thing and it does stimulate people to come back to the places. They've also decided that they would add extra months onto your season pass if you have a season pass which we do. So we got an extra two months on our season pass which means we can continue to come here and enjoy the museum for a little bit longer. It's also possible to go inside the houses as well as seeing the outside of them and the museum curators here have set all the houses up with historically accurate things inside them so uh, I'll show you the kitchen of this building afterwards but there'll be small ornaments and some of the houses they range from quite a long time ago so many hundreds of years old to ones from sort of the beginning of the 20th century and the late uh, 19th century so you can actually see how different it was yeah. where people lived in each of the houses just at the back of the kitchen in this house that we're in at the moment, it's all set up for jam making. Um, you can see that they've got the preserving jars on the shelf there. They've got the strainer here where they would strain the jam. So it's really, really fascinating. It's not just looking at perhaps how the table might be laid here, but a lot of things that show what people would have used different parts of the houses for. When you arrive at the museum, you can pick up a map, but in case you forget, each of the houses has a little plaque outside which will show you, both in English and Danish, what they're, oh look, the sun's come out now, uh, who would have lived in the house, when it was built, etc. So this one, which we've just been in, which had the jam making thing, was a little manor from um, the top well, sort of middle to top of Jutland. It was built in the mid 17th century. It was reconstructed in 2003. And the furnishings inside it are actually from 1915. So they're not contemporary to when the house was built, but they're fascinating nevertheless. And it does say outside. And it gives you a little bit of the history of the um, farm. So until the 1750s, the farm was owned by the Shield family. Um, there's some more information there. From 1900 to 1920, it was rented to some other people. In the 1950s, it served as a summer guest house so the furnishings in there would have been contemporary for one of the periods when people were living here just not when it was actually built and then it tells you if you're interested in how the buildings uh, were built it tells you about that and it would also give you an example of who lived in the house um, in 1911 so there would have been a tenant his wife 
two daughters or three daughters um, and the wife's sister it just says relative in English and then they would have had quite a few people working for them they had two maids a farm two farm or three farm hands and multiple younger farm hands there and it will also explain to you what each of the rooms in the building are so you can see this for every single house that's in the Freelands Museum so if you're looking at them and you're interested you can find out a little bit more At the opposite end to the main entrance of the museum is a second smaller entrance. Um, I'm going to post up in the notes underneath here all the links to the website of the Freelands Museum so you can read it for yourself. But these are beautiful kitchen gardens here where they're growing some kind of peas or beans, various different things. And at the museum, unlike other museums, well, I suppose not unlike other museums, but the curators here are experts on both the historical nature of the houses but also of the gardens and what would have been grown here and we've been here a few times and, and chatted with all oh, the big leeks down here um, and chatted with some of the people that work here about what they know and uh, further up closer to the main windmill in the the museum is a beautiful orchard you can't actually enter the orchard itself um, but you can see it from the outside and they have such a lot of varieties of I guess what nowadays we would call heritage um, apples or heirloom apples you know very old varieties and the very first time we came here there was uh, one of the museum workers was in the orchard and she gave us a big selection of different apples to try and some of them were apples I'd never really encountered before so that was really really fascinating so it's interesting to come here and see a lot of what I guess old Danish life would have been like they also have quite an extensive program of events that go on here and you can see this on their website but also here's the program here here's a map as you enter and they open up until the autumn um, then they close and they're open for the autumn holiday and then they open again for Christmas. But if you're visiting Copenhagen or you live here, it's well worth coming along and having a look and seeing what's available. And over here you've got some produce that they've got laid out just there for you to look at. I don't think it's for taking, it's, it's just for looking at. So that's really, really interesting. I just love it here. It's a great way to get out of the city, get some fresh air, but also understand some of the history of Denmark while you're at it. So I would really recommend coming. And as I say, up until the 9th of August, it's 50% off coming into the museum. Again, this is very relevant because it's 2020 and you might be watching this video in the future and this kind of thing isn't, isn't relevant anymore. But they're obviously asking people to maintain distance to um, social distance in the museum and it's one metre and they're telling us that this is the distance of two piglets. Maintain, oh, two to three piglets distance between yourself and others. I've seen this in some other places, you know, they said so many bicycle lengths or what have you. But I think that's a really friendly way of, of telling us what we need to do without being being too dictatorial but also making it fun and relevant to the museum.
hope you've enjoyed this visit to the Freelands Museum. Yeah. It's been a kind of cloudy but sunny day, a, a very typical Danish summer's day. And if you have enjoyed this video, do consider subscribing to my channel and giving me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And I hope to see you here again soon. Until then, bye for now.